Sometimes you just want to get something done and you don't want to film it. Believe me, I've done that so many times, but I went through the process of fixing something with 3D printing and having to fix a broken part for someone else. And I just wanted to talk about the process because it was fascinating and I, I ended up with a really cool solution on how to fix it, make it 3D printable and hopefully make a stronger part. You guys, this is gonna be great. This is 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCB Wave. 8% off, link in the description. You know what to do. Recently, in a local Facebook group, someone asked if there was someone with a 3D printer that could help them fix a broken part. I raised my hand, and usually when someone asks this, they don't have any idea of, of who I am or the role I play within the global 3D printing market itself, which is kind of fun. And so I talked to this person and they wanted a 3D printer because they need to fix a broken part. They've got this drum set that has a, a stand and the stand is held together by parts that look like this. This is not the broken part, this is the one that works. And the broken part had one of these pieces here break off. And I said, sure, I could, I could 3D print a new one of those. Do you have the model? And they said, no but I've got this one, which isn't broken, and I figured you just scan this and reprint it. I love that they ask this question because that's not how you do it. Really, really not. You can do that. There are scanners that can scan things that are smaller and then create the 3D geometry and then you clean it up and then you have something. But I, I, I told her for this, I didn't wanna do that because I quite frankly, I'm. I don't know a lot about 3D scanning yet. That's still one of the areas I wanna learn. So if you have suggestions or tips, obviously leave those down in the comments. But for me, what I thought, something like this is a great excuse to utilize some digital calipers in Fusion 360. The woman brought the part to me and I was able to take a look at it and I started to measure the part because I needed to know how long to make things and how thick to make things. And I thought this isn't something that's easily 3D printable. So my solution for this was to bisect the model, just cut it in half this way. And that way there would be two halves down on the print bed. And then when it finished, you would pick them up, put them together and then insert them into the tubes and it should hold together just fine. So in thinking that, I went about my design process within Fusion 360. And <laughs> in fact, I was sitting on my couch at home and we were watching TV, my wife and I, while I was catting this up. Obviously find the place where you can CAD your best and use whatever you want on shape, Fusion 360, Tinkercad, take your pick. I used Fusion 360 for this. And in designing it, I drew my shape, I extruded, and then uh, in my measurements for this direction, I cut things in half. I made a, a half circle here and brought it across and offset the extrusion here and I made a new part. What I did is I sent off a few of those to my Prusa Mark IV, which happens to have an obsidian nozzle on it. And on that machine for the material, I wanted something strong and somewhat stiff. So I chose the Polymaker PA12CF. So PA12, polyamide being a nylon and the CF being carbon fiber. You get the benefits of the nylon and that CF is gonna stiffen it up just a little bit. I set it to print on the Mark IV with the obsidian nozzle. Didn't take very long. And at the end, I got some good parts. Check it out. Two parts. And then they go together like that. And then they will accept the tube on this side, this side, and this side. And then I held it up next to this and I was like, well, shoot. <laughs> These are not the same. Oh, no. And, and one of the things I have to remember when doing different operations with Infusion 360, as an example, I chose to extrude both directions. And you start in the middle and you want to extrude in both directions. You need to give it half the distance or half the, the width of your part because it's going to go that way and that way that amount. And so I had forgot to do that, which is why this is twice as long as this. Easy, simple things to fix within CAD, but a good reminder to double, maybe triple check your work if you have a big print to go. This was less than an hour and not a lot of material. Wasn't that big of a deal for me, but for you, if your part is gonna take hours or perhaps days, maybe double or triple check your work. The reprints, put them together. They look great, and when held up to this piece, 
it's precise. It looks exactly the same. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to give the person a fixed piece, but I wanted to design it in a way to make it appropriate for 3D printing. And what's kind of neat, when you lay it down like this to print it, and then you bring it up, you get the strength on all axes. Because the layers are going this way and this way, and it builds up this way, then if you rotate it like this, then you put a pipe in, you try to bend it, you're going against the grain, essentially. And so you're left with great parts. You're left with great parts. And I'm really excited for them to use this. And even if my tolerance isn't dialed in perfectly, this is an injection molded part, what you can do is take this and wrap some tape or paper or something around it to get a nice snug fit within that pipe on each of the directions. And then you're good to go. And if any of these ever break, then you just print out more of these. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And it's, it's a really fun learning moment because normally when you look at something like this and you're like me, you think, oh my gosh, the CAD for that could be complex. I don't do a lot of CAD work. It's a little bit difficult. But when you, when you take a moment and really look into it and you think of how you can make it better for 3D printing in the CAD process, you end up with some really simple procedures and then all you have to do is measure correctly. <laughs> really. And then you get yourself a good part. Thanks for coming along on this journey. I, I wasn't anticipating making any sort of content on this. Someone just needed some help and I thought it'd be cool to help them. But in doing that, I thought it might be interesting to tell you about it because there might be a problem that you're facing that CAD might be able to help, but maybe you're a little bit scared or anxious, or you don't think you have the skill set necessary to do it. Why not start today? And I wish you the best of luck with it. And really, thanks for making this far, because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Fix all the things. <laughs> and as always, high five.